I'm Augie Galindo. I'm one of the owners of Testosterone Centers of Texas. The answer is no. TRT cannot cause prostate cancer. There is a, a fine line here though I want to delineate. Testosterone does not cause prostate cancer, but it can worsen already present prostate cancer or one that develops while you're already on it. Most prostate cancers like testosterone and will grow more aggressively in the face of higher testosterone levels. So the treatment for most prostate cancers, or part of the treatment at least, is to basically zero out testosterone. But the relationship is a little bit more complex than that. Testosterone becomes DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone, and dihydrotestosterone is the primary stimulant of prostate function or activity. So if testosterone levels are low, DHT levels may be low, and that means your prostate may be less active than it otherwise would be. And so that means it could be smaller, and that also means that your PSA, your prostate-specific antigen, could be lower. As we raise testosterone levels, we can raise DHT levels, we can increase prostatic activity, and that can also increase your PSA. The concern would be if somebody is naive to testosterone replacement therapy, and they have an undiagnosed cancer in that pre-treatment prostate, then I put you on testosterone, raise your testosterone levels, and then that cancer is likely to grow more aggressively because of the increased testosterone levels. This is not a causal factor. It's been proven time and time again that testosterone does not cause the cancer, but it, again, it can make it grow more aggressively. So it's somewhat of a fine line, but it's a very important delineation. TRT can cause your PSA numbers to increase. And again, that's by that mechanism that testosterone becomes one of two active metabolites. One of those is DHT. DHT is what tells your prostate to be more active and a more active prostate is going to produce more prostate specific antigen or your PSA. And so that number can go up. In fact, I would say it goes up with most of my patients, but the increase from baseline to being on therapy is usually a correction of sorts. In other words, it doesn't just keep ramping up over time, but it will go from where it was before there was any uh, increased testosterone stimulation, and then we optimize your testosterone levels, so your PSA levels do go up a bit, but they typically stay steady there unless there's some other outside factor changing things. Now, one of the things that we monitor is not just your PSA, but also your PSA velocity. This is the rapidity with which your PSA changes. So if a normal PSA is all the way up to four, but a PSA velocity in any given 12 month period is abnormal over 1.2, and your PSA is 0.6 at baseline, and then one year later after being on therapy, we check again, and your PSA is now 3.2. Well, 3.2 is technically normal, but the jump from 0.6 to 3.2 is not. So these are things that can happen with your testosterone replacement therapy and your PSA. What we typically see is just the movement of your PSA to a corrected level with the normalized size of your prostate because now we've optimized testosterone levels, thereby increasing DHT levels, thereby increasing the activity of your prostate and correcting your PSA to where it would be had your testosterone levels been normal before coming to see us. If it is discovered that you have existing prostate cancer, that is a contraindication to testosterone replacement therapy. In fact, moving forward, even after prostate cancer has been completely eradicated by all the tests, you still have a very precarious position left. In, in other words, the, the recommendation is that after a total prostatectomy, they've completely removed your prostate, and after you've had five years of a non-detectable PSA, then you may be a candidate for testosterone replacement therapy. The problem is that prostate cancers can be very aggressive and they can metastasize and they can go to places that are not your prostate and they can, like any other cancer that is of a malignant nature, be fatal as they progress. So you are still taking a risk even after all of that, even if you've been successfully treated, whether that be by surgery or chemotherapy or radiation, and you've had five years of a non-detectable PSA, there's still that chance that testosterone replacement therapy could worsen your prognosis because it could kick back off a, a seeded 
prostate cancer that has metastasized to somewhere else even though you no longer have a prostate. So this is something you want to venture into very, very carefully. You need to have somebody who is watching you on the urologic side and as well as a testosterone replacement therapy provider who knows exactly how to, to monitor it on the TRT side. Um, it's just something I typically recommend against just because it is such a high risk situation. TRT can cause prostate change in a normal prostate. Now typically, again, this is that correction I was talking about before. So testosterone levels go up, DHT levels go up, your prostate becomes more active. What I mean by that is there's going to be an increase in size because it's more active. So yes, there can be an increase in size and that is certainly is a change to your prostate. But if everything is going right otherwise and that maintains its new baseline, your PSA maintains its new baseline, then there won't be an ongoing change. One of the things we do to monitor how things are going with your prostate is to look at your AUA IPSS score. Basically, this tells me all those red flag symptoms of obstructive urinary symptoms. So these are things like increased frequency of urination, decreased caliber of stream, having higher urgency to urinate, not being able to empty your bladder completely. The list goes on, but these are things that we look at on a, at least annual basis to make sure that we are not missing something that's going on that may be sinister with your prostate. But we will be looking at PSAs every 90 days. We look at your AUA score, again, at least annually, if not every six months. We require that our patients have their annual exams uh, with their primary care doctors to do a digital rectal exam and a prostate exam. So if you are the right age and or PSA level, that needs to be done as well. All of these things are tailored to make sure that we keep an eye on this particular side effect. I am Augie Galindo. I'm one of the owners of Testosterone Centers of Texas. Thank you for listening and watching. And if you would like to learn more, go to tctmed.com.